it's perfect grace beyond measure love that's unending these are the works of your hands i love how you do things great is your of your hands and I know it's perfect your grace beyond measure and love that's unending these are the works of your hands I love how you do things yeah great is your faithfulness new are your mercies oh how steadfast your love sing about it. Great is your faithfulness. You are your mercies. Oh, how steadfast your love. I love to sing about it. Yes, I do. I love to sing about you, Jesus. There's nothing more I'd rather do than sing about my testimony the grave I was in you empty I can't help but sing it you gave me joy for morning now hope is my testimony the grave I was in you empty I can't help but sing it you gave me joy for morning now hope is my testimony the grave I was in you empty, I can't help but sing it. You gave me joy for morning. Now hope is my testimony. The grave I was in, you empty. I can't help but sing it. Oh. Great is your faithfulness. You are your mercy.
seek me out like a treasure prize. A oh, love so deep and powerful. I've come to find it inexhaustible. And it never runs out on me. Mm. And I know it never will. Somehow, it never stops chasing me. And I know it never will. We will see. For I will see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living, in the land of the living, for I will see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living, in the land of the living. It's a love so grand, exceeding goodness. Oh, it's taking captive heavy lofty hands, and it never runs out on me, no matter what. And I know it never will. It's always chasing after us. It never stops chasing. Yeah. 
Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, that we're going to see the goodness of you in the season we're in right now. Because there's many that are even in the middle of maybe circumstances where they don't know where your goodness is. But Jesus, I declare and speak tonight that they will see the goodness of you even in the middle of something they can't understand or see. Lord, I thank you that maybe even in the middle of a diagnosis or maybe in the middle of a family situation, no matter what it is, I thank you that tonight there'll be a refreshing in your spirit, Jesus, tonight. And we will get to experience together the goodness of our Father. We thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen, amen. Welcome to Angela's Temple. The Church of the Dream Center is so, so good to have you all with us today. We just got done today with an incredible back to school bash. The Dream Center, Fairly, the entire team did an incredible job. Of course, our lovely sponsors and partners, the Kershaw Challenge, Clayton. Yeah, look at this. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. We were able to give out over 3,500 backpacks we had today. We're going to continue today giving them out for those in our neighborhoods and that preparing kids for school. And that is what you guys got to be a part of today. So thank you, church. Welcome. If this is your first time here, thank you for being here. Thank you for being so faithful. We do have one of the Kona ice trucks that was out there today is going to be here tonight, right after service, free shave ice for everyone right after service. So stay afterwards, right out these doors. And we're going to have a great Great night of just continual getting in the word together in community. But we're going to do something we do every week. And that is here a life-changing uh, story and testimony. And tonight, we're in for a real treat here. We get to hear a success story from somebody who went through our leadership school and our discipleship program in 2005 through 2007. And so I'm extremely excited for Blake. Would you come on up here? He is a success story. He lives in Australia now with his wife and kids. But he's going to share with us about what God has continued to do in his life because of his yes to be here years ago and what God is doing. So Blake, share with us. Hey, God. I love y'all so much. I've dreamed of saying thank you. I've dreamed of it. And yeah, you're such a miracle, sir. Thank you for saying yes to Jesus. Hey guys, love y'all so much. My name is Blake. The quick version is, I checked into Dream Center Discipleship November 27, 2005. A college dropout, a week away from being homeless. Mom calls me and says, son, what are you gonna do? And I knew at that moment if I stayed where I was, I could feel death like chasing me. It was just one of those dark times. Hopped on a plane from Oklahoma, landed, took the tour with my family, that night went into intake, that was a Tuesday night, and went right into Dream Center Discipleship. And that program changed my life, exposed me to Jesus. Those Thursday nights, the serving, the sessions, I had the privilege to do security right in this hallway. So I, I got to hear the word and just to see God and, and Pastor Brad Reed, just, just, just the stories in this room changed my life completely. Then. The miracle was the team, pa Pastor Matthew and everyone else was like, hey, there's something on this guy's life. We think he should go to DCLS. And they gave me a full ride scholarship, guys. Paid for my way to get into that program. Um, that changed my life. Then I'm so grateful to Pastor Aaron Bradley who put up with me. See, this room dealt with all the ugly in me so that the world could see something better. And I'm so grateful for it. Um, then 2009, Pastor Matthew met my wife on a Sunday morning, bringing a whole bus route of kids in. She's from Australia. She's right here. This is my amazing wife right there. A year later, we got married, ended up moving to Australia and got into ministry and got to bring what God did in us here, literally all across the world, got to help plant churches in Africa in Australia, in Asia, um, I don't deserve to be here. It, I, honestly, it's bizarre, but I'm grateful for God. I'm grateful for this house. I'm grateful for the moms and dads. I'm grateful for the discipleship. Guys, this room taught me what it meant for God's house to be a family. So to my brothers up there, I just want to say I love you. This thing works. It's real. Keep going. God is faithful to my sisters, 
God is going to use you. You are not broken. You are not forgotten. God is not done with you. There is a reason you are here and that you breathe oxygen on this planet and his destiny is just getting started in you and to DCLS. I'm telling you, this thing is only the beginning. The experience here, there's anointing in the soil here, guys. And sir, can I just give you a hug? Is that okay? Thank you so much. I love you guys. That's all. I love y'all. Have a great night. Thank you. Give it up for Blake. Oh, you may, you may be seated tonight. Man, what a great word. What a great word already, man. Man, Blake got a, just fired up in here. By now, I'm going to call the ushers forward. We get the, the opportunity to give to the Lord. You know, I've been a... Uh, over the course of my life, you know, I've got to see a lot of block parties. I've got to be a lot of different things. And, you know, every time I, I, I ever go to a block party, it's interesting, right? It was like, oh, man, come to this block party. It's going to be great. It's only going to cost you. You know, your kids want to jump in jumpers, and it's like, oh, you just got to go get a little ticket. You're like, okay, cool. You know, and it's like, here's the ticket. It's only $8.99 a ticket. You know, you're like, dang, you know, my kids want to jump. And I thought about today, and I saw the house of the Lord today. I, I was over at, you know, at the back to school bash, and I thought, this is what the house of the Lord is about. It's an overflow of God's generosity. It's an overflow. It's like, you, you, you know, like, I mean, it was so much. We had cookies on the ground. We had Dodger dogs. We had mustard and craziness. And, but that's what it is. It's an overflow of God's goodness. Like that song says, I will see the goodness. I saw it. I saw it today. I saw the goodness of the Lord today manifested through every one of you serving and loving. And I just thought, you know what? It, this is what it's about. It's an overflow of God's goodness. I, I love that verse, right? It says, uh, a, a generous soul will prosper, and he who waters will himself be watered. And I thought, in times like this, right, you, you know, hot and sweaty, I went home, I literally did the whole, like, you know, <laughs> new shirt, you know, because, you know, man, it was sweaty out there. Somebody came up to me after, early on, was like, hey, did you, oh, sorry my sister came up and said did you get hit with a cone of ice on your back you know and I was like no that's just disgusting back sweat so sorry about that right I mean that's how bad it was right and, and man every one of us after serving and loving you know but I, I'll, I'll tell you this when any time I get the opportunity to come to a service or something right after something like that I'm gonna tell you right now it's an opportunity to receive something special from God it's not because you know, why because when you pour yourself out God's so faithful to pour back into you. So today in the offer, let's just pour ourselves out. Let's just end this day on a high note. Let's just, let's just do something special for God. Let's just pour ourselves all the way out and watch what God does in our hearts and our life. Because the cool thing about God is when you say, when you give, you go, you know, Lord, I love you, right? I love that. Lord, I love, I say that a lot. Lord, I love you. And it's almost like the Lord's like, I loved you first. You're like, Lord, I want to give. He's like, but I, I give to you first. Right, so when we give and we love, just watch the Lord love all over you today, amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this, the gift that we get to give, Lord. Lord, today has just been a just unbelievable marathon of generosity, Lord. People have been waiting all day in lines, what? To see the goodness of God, to see everything be free. I saw people's just eyes just shocked that every single thing that they got to experience today for their, for their whole family was free. Lord, I thank you that salvation, it cost us a yes, but, and it cost Jesus so much. But because it cost Jesus so much, you offer it to me. It's a free gift of salvation. It's the free gift of righteousness. Bless the gift and the giver today. Challenge us internally, Lord, to do something really significant for your kingdom today. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Let's do our very best. There's many ways you can give. You guys know what it is already, right? Go on the app. You know, do something significant or just bring it, go old school. Bring it down and let's just see God do something awesome today.
Lord Jesus, we just thank you tonight for this unbelievable generosity. And Lord, we thank you this morning for those that are giving online on the online service. Lord, you have blessed them greatly. Bless them to be a blessing. We thank you, God, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, come on, Blake. Blake made my night. He made my week. He made my year. And uh, what an unbelievable word, man. I just, when people say that, it's like, it's, people say what keeps you going. Well, that keep you going for like another six months right there. I mean, being realistic, that's about a six-month word right there, right? And then uh, in the six months, God will probably give you something else. But, uh, but that was so powerful. I was so honored, so grateful. And I know that today's outreach was unbelievable. Man, it's like, usually it takes a while for, you know, the day to build. And I, like, I blinked, and it was like, oh, my goodness. I've never seen more people in my life that were there than today. Thank you, Mary Lee, for the great job putting it together. <laughs> unbelievable. That was you know what? It was so smooth. I was almost a little upset. There wasn't a fight. There wasn't any punching. Uh, there wasn't anything. There's was no drama. It was just it was just too peaceful, too organized. And uh, no, I, I be careful what you wish for because I don't want to get what I'm what I wish for there. But uh, no, it was unbelievable. It was just so peaceful, so beautiful, so incredible. And uh, we just thank God for everyone. You know, this summer I'm just God just spoke to me after. Um, like I said, after I kind of dealt with the, kind of, well, I dealt with the stroke uh, a couple months ago, just to preach outrageous hope, just to kind of preach the whole summer of just hope and dealing with um, battles and struggles, as we always anticipated that maybe two years after um, COVID, the issues would really hit. Um, I, I told everyone, I go, the issues aren't hitting now; they're going to hit later in a couple years once we get through the post trauma of everything that's going on. So, uh, yeah. I, you, the bottom? No, all right. So, uh, but, so I'm kind of preaching through those issues, and I'm just going to speak a little bit about anxiety here tonight, um, preach on that issue, and uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything at prayer and supplication, making your requests known to God. How many of you know that we got a lot of burdens, we got a lot of problems, but we don't have a lot of requests, requests unto God? Like, we talk about everything that, that bothers us, everything that makes us mad, but God's up there saying, you're not even putting up an order up here in heaven here. There's not even a request going on here. All there is is complaining all the time. Where, where's the request? Uh, and the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and mind and Christ Jesus. You've got to request. You've got to ask. You've got to make it known. That's a peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, there's a peace that's available for every single person beyond anything that you ever dreamed that you could have in your life. You see, because anxiety is a death trap. It causes you to believe that you'll never know what it's like. You'll never even touch the surface of what freedom really is. But the Bible says that there is a place, there is a peace, there is a place that you can get to in your life where you will and can and shall, and it's a part of your nature of who God has made you to be a person of freedom. There is a peace beyond reasonable understanding and above your best case scenarios. When I pray for people on the road, I just pray for people all the time. This is why I pray. I say, God, I pray that you'll do something that will baffle their best case scenario. That's why I pray all the time. God, give them something that would overwhelm, that would be greater than their best case scenario to remind them that God surpasses all of our comprehension and knowledge of what is possible. In order to be healed of anxiety, you have to trust in a God that is beyond human understanding. A dependency upon God that is beyond understanding. The peace of mind that we long for will never be found in trying to figure everything out. It's a relationship with God that is beyond anything that we're stressing and worrying about. It is a place that we get to in our brain, in our mind, in our spirit, in our body that says no matter what goes on, there is an understanding and a peace that is outside of what I'm dealing with. You see, we fear the future because we can't control it. We fear the unknown because we cannot see it. We fear the possibilities because we have forgotten that God, by refusing to make our requests known unto God, is the God of the impossible. 
with everything in prayer and supplication because in everything we must remind ourselves that God is in control. You see, anxiety lives in tomorrow, thus paralyzes any effort of getting one step closer to freedom today. Its residence is in tomorrow. Its residence is in uncertainty. I remember I was uh, flying on an airplane there, and uh, this lady sitting next to me was in her 50s, and uh, she'd never been on an airplane before in her life. And uh, she, was, she was freaking out. I mean, um, you know, one every three flights, I get, like, I, I get these points where you get upgraded, you know, and uh, so because uh, I'm flying so much, I have standby lists, you know, they give you the upgrade, and, and, uh, and I was just really excited, you know, and I was sitting up there, you know, in the, in the first class, and this lady was next to me, and she was so scared. She says, I've never been on a plane before. She was terrified, and she was downing so many drinks. I'm like, how are you able to drink that much in an airplane? You know, there's someone drunk on a plane. I mean, that's exactly what was going on, right? And she's sitting there. She said, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm terrified of flying. I'm going to die. And I said, you are not going to die. She said, yes, I am. I am going to die, and I will not see my 60s. I said, you will not die. And here's why. Because one of the signs of the times is that the Clippers will win the world championship, and then the Lord will come back. And that's not going to happen for a while. It's in the Bible. It really is. It's in the Word somewhere. She said, she says, sir, can I hold your hand? And she grabbed my hand, literally clutching it. I'm not kidding you. She felt her hand felt like the Incredible Hulk. I'm like, you know those superhero movies like Marvel and someone that like grabs your hand? You're like, no. It was like my hand was cracking bones and everything. And I said, but the statistics are in your favor. There's a 99.999999% chance that you will not die today. And she said, we're going to die today. And, I, and she said, well, what if this is the point zero 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 one time it happens? I said, it's not going to happen. The odds are impossible. She says, someone wins the lottery, don't they? I'm like, yeah, but uh, I said, your chances are still good. But she was fearing the unknown, what was ahead of her. She was worried about an outcome that was already in her favor. And it was already working out for good. And something that she couldn't control anyway, she was fearing. And when, when we can't sleep at night, why is this? Because we are worried about something that's coming up the next day. Benjamin Franklin said, do not anticipate trouble or never worry about what may never happen. Live in the sunlight. North Carolina basketball coach Dean Smith said, if you treat every situation as a life or death matter, you'll die a lot of times. Thomas Jefferson said, how much pain they have cost us, the evils that have never happened. And Philippians said it best when it says, be anxious for nothing, but everything in prayer and supplication. Prayer and supplication. What is supplication? You know what supplication simply is? It's a simple plead for help unto God. That's what it is. A supplication is just simply uh, saying, what's up, God? No, I'm just teasing. That's bad. Anyways, but it's just simply, uh, Blake goes, I didn't come back to America for jokes like that. But uh, supplication means a humble plea, a prayer, and a humility that provides a calmness of spirit. When we are humble, we give God charge over our life. We take our request to God, and we leave it there. I, I talked to a guy once, and I said, what's wrong, man? You look so worried. You look so stressed. And he said, I don't know, man. I said, what, what are you worried about? He said, nothing. And I said, well, then why are you worried? He said, that's why I'm worried. Because I'm worried about nothing. And I should be worried about something. And I know people like, who are afraid of things that they think they should fear just because everything is going good in their life. And they're programmed to live in that place of constant anxiety and turmoil. And God is like, I want to take you beyond understanding. I want your relationship with me to be so close to prayer and supplication and getting to know me and getting in my word and going through the Bible studies that we give online, all the different things that we do. And I just want you to grow in the things of God and get to the place in your life where you get beyond understanding. Understanding um, is a human thing, but uh, God's peace surpasses all human understanding. And, and so I know people are afraid of jail. And yet, they haven't stole one cookie from a store, or they haven't, like, uh, grabbed one piece of candy, or they're the ones that go to the frog. Uh, they, they won't even taste fruit at the market. They're so clean, right? And yet they got nightmares about going to prison, fearing outcomes that will never happen in their life. I mean, uh, kids go, go, 
you know, they, they're ready to go to DCLS. They've already signed the application. They're on their way. They're heading to DCLS, and all of a sudden, they turn television on. They hear about all the bad stories about what's happening in Los Angeles. And their parents are like, no, 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 you, you can't go there, right? And, and so they take that back, that application back. Why? Because the fear of the unknown, when God is already in the place of the unknown, can drive you to a place where you don't live according to a peace that surpasses all understanding, and understanding that God is with you. And once you understand that God is with you, and he is for you, and he is constantly on your side and moving on your behalf, You'll just start living in this scenario of every day getting up and saying, God, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get to the other side. Anxiety is a belief that you need to help God out by carrying burdens that he only was meant to carry. It's a form of pride, anxiety is. Now, I know people have medical issues. I understand some of those things. Those things God can help us with too, amen? But, it, but it's, it's a form of pride in many of us. That God is not big enough to handle all of our cares. When the Bible says, cast all of your cares on him because he cares for you. But pride is saying, God, I don't think you're big enough to handle this situation. So I'm not even going to pray. Because I think it's beyond you. I think it's too big of a scenario. And if I give it to you, I just think it's going to bounce right back. So I'm not going to even bother to, pr to try to pray. And that's exactly where the enemy wants his people to live, in that place. I mean, you got to live in the anticipation. I mean, I tell those kids all the time, DCLS, I said, don't anticipate bad things. Anticipate divine encounters. Anticipate the people like Martins that are going to be transformed and work the gym at the Dream Center, you know, and, and you'll find on Skid Row and just hustling, dealing, using crack right there. Brings him back on the bus, and now he's been with us for like 10 years. Anticipate those kind of things happening. Anticipate the beach. Anticipate in and out Burger. Anticipate the Dodgers winning a championship, going down Figueroa. Amen. You notice I didn't say Lakers? I didn't say, yeah, anyways. But you see, when you give your life over to a dependency on God, you don't fear situations. You embrace them. You start expecting the best of life instead of the worst because your life is connected to a life of prayer and supplication. It's hard to ever fail when your dependency is on God. It's hard to ever get to a situation where, because even the, the failure works together for good. I mean, everything works together for good. The peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. It will guard it. It will guard you from fear and of outcomes. It's like a guard protecting a quarterback. Have you ever seen um, a guard that is really good, like a good passing um, you know, like a, a blocker in the NFL? And you'll, be, you'll see the draft. They'll be like, now, third in the draft is an offensive lineman. Everyone boos, you know, in the crowd. They'll boo because they all want a quarterback and receiver, you know. And the third-round draft pick gets up there. He's a big old heavy guy, you know. It's like, how did we pick him third? Well, you know why? When your quarterback throws for 450 yards, there's a guy protecting your blind side from your career being ended that's blocking for you. And sometimes a blocker can be the number one draft pick. And the reason why is because he is protecting you. You got a guy, you're dropping back and you got a God that's literally protecting you. He's protecting that blind side of the enemy. You don't have to fear what could go wrong. You got a first round draft pick God up there who's protecting the boundaries of your life of what can go right. Look, a life lived with Jesus is a dangerous life that challenges, fears, and defies the threat of outcomes. You start living your life on the offense rather than defense. Outcomes were not meant to be feared. Outcomes were meant to be challenged. Even if your outcome doesn't go your way, when you live in faith, it will eventually go your way. So, so it's either... Trust and live in a place beyond your understanding or it's being stuck in the turmoil of your understanding, which is a dangerous place to live. Remember years ago, um, I, I grew up in Arizona, and we used to have the Arizona State Fair every year. And, and uh, one year, I, as a kid, I had a traumatizing experience. I went to the fair, and, um, you know, you buy those tickets to go on rides. Back then, it was like you'd, you had the four tickets, you know, the rolls. You'd, like, you'd have to rip them up, and you'd have to, like, give them to people. And so, uh, so I went to one of the rides, and it was one of those haunted houses. A fair haunted houses are the worst. 
I mean, they got like scary dudes out there, you know, and like guys like on the ride, you're like, oh, I don't go, you know, and you go on these little carts that are scary enough because they barely stay on the rails, you know, and you're going around and then like you just turn around the corner, it's like some cheap strobe light, and like it turns on, and then there's a guy in jail going, ah, like he has his blood all over his face, you're like, oh, and, like, and the car goes around the corner and turn around the other side, and then all of a sudden, nah, 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 you know, turn, and there's like a scene of a guy's, I don't want to gross you out, but you know, head not there anymore, and you're like, oh my goodness, and so you're like kind of going around these like blind corners, and like lights are turning on, and then all these scary things are happening, and so I was, I was, I was already traumatized going to Arizona, and then I got to the end of the ride, and there's like, back then, Arizona, I mean, you could like, they would do things like this back then, but at the end of the ride, this guy goes, Arr! I just grabbed my face, in this like scary, like satanic costume, he just like grabbed my face, like you went like this, you at the end of the ride. And like full on grabbed my head and just like, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't got over it. It was traumatizing. I'm like, dude, you can't just grab a guy's head at the end of a ride in a car, you know, try to scare him like that. But he did. And, uh, and so I went back years ago to the Orange County Fair. And, uh, that was, and I saw that ride. I'm like, man, I'll go on anything. I'll drop 300 feet from the sky. I've been to that ride in New Zealand, which was the scariest ride you've been in where they, like, you sit there and they launch you into space. And you're like, what's up, Moses? You're so high. I mean, you're like, you're hanging out, having a buffet with the prophets and everything. It's crazy. But uh, this one scared me. It just this little fair cart. And, um, and by this time, I said, you know what? Just because of the fact I fear it, I'm going to go on it again. And, uh, and so there was a guy in the end, you know, of the ride. He, he didn't touch anybody. I was watching. I was like, what's going on at the end of the ride? He, at the end of the ride, he would just go, ah, like that, and just kind of wave and like, oh, everybody. Kind of like the, the guy on the Matterhorn, you know, the snow guy. He did, kind of like that, right? And so, um, snow guy, I don't even know what his name is, but, uh, any Disney loyalists actually know his name? The Abominable Snowman, yes. I wish you knew the Bible like you knew Disney characters. But anyways, but, uh, but anyways, pulling around the corner. Pulling around the corner. And I said, you know what? I said, I see what that guy's doing. I'm going to get revenge. I'm going to scare what used to scare me. And I got to the end, and he kind of go, oh, boo, like that. And I already knew what his trick was. So when he got to the end and that door opened and he came to the end, I went right back at him and he like backed up, you know, and he was like, what in the world? No one's ever done that before. Why? I just wanted to face something I feared and I wanted to conquer it. I would look it in the eye and just say, you know what? The Bible says I'm a prisoner of hope. A prisoner of great expectations, and I felt so good about myself because I got on that ride, and I faced a fear, and I fought back with what was what tor tormented me all these years. I fought back, and I went back, got a chocolate-covered fried Twinkie in celebration on the fair, wrapped with bacon and jalapenos and all that stuff on the outside. Faith in the unknown, once again, conquering fears. But fearing things, fearing the unknown... Is not of God, and some of you are fearing what, what um, is only things according to your understanding, and not a peace that surpasses all understanding. You got to look beyond what your understanding is, and what is beyond it, what is surpassed it, what's ahead of it, that's in front of it. God said. Do not fear what's in front of you. Have faith in what's already gone before it, and God has already gone before the thing that you fear. You'll say, Pastor, I got a court date in three months, and I might go to jail. Well, you know what happened? Some pretty big revivals happen in jail. Now, I'm not saying that that's the ideal situation, but you, God will prepare you for it before you'll get there. And the thing that you thought was the worst thing in your life could be the best thing that's ever happened to you and turn your life around. Some of you are, are fearing what they're going to serve in the cafeteria for dinner. Uh, I sure hope it's not spaghetti. I got uh, allergens to wheat or whatever. And... Uh, don't worry, it's not wheat. Amen. Eat that mystery spaghetti by faith in Jesus' name. Be anxious for nothing. The Word of God gives us no allowances to live our life ruled by anything other than faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. Well, Pastor, that's impossible. No, it's not. Not when we trained ourselves to see beyond understanding and see what has surpassed it, what is ahead of it. You've got to look through the thing that you fear, and you've got to see faith. Faith is always through the thing in which you fear. 
and realize that God is a God of time and that circumstances have a shelf life, but God's goodness is beyond all of it. Bring everything to God by way of prayer and supplication. Just keep bringing your request of anxiousness to God nonstop. Uh, uh, trust me, God can handle more of this. He wants more of it. He's not up in heaven saying, man, uh, that's enough. I've handled enough. No, just keep going with it. Even if it's stupid and embarrassing, your request to God. Even if you tell him things that you're ashamed, you keep telling him all the time. And some of us are fearing the most crazy, outrageous things that we don't need to be fearing because our mind is in the understanding of men, the insecurities of men, the, 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 the illusion of men, the, the weird concepts of men, the strategies of men. And so we're living in this worldly understanding that everything must be fearful, that it's driven by news cycles. Do you know the reason why every news cycle starts off with like 10 seconds of like boom music, like, it's trying to drag you into an understanding of fear in the world. But that is not godly. That's not how we live our life. How many of you ever used to go to the bathroom and be fearful there'd be a snake in your bathroom as a kid? Not one of you. See, you're normal. I'm not. But this is good. I'm being healed by this. Blake, it's helping me. Amen. But some people, like, you know, every five seconds, look at it. is there a snake in the bathroom? Because what happened one time in, like, in like Wollongong, Australia, someone had a snake in their toilet, right? And, and uh, I remember I, w I was in Wollongong, or uh, no, I was in this place where they had these uh, magpies in Australia. And I go, what are magpies? These birds flying everywhere. I think I was in like um, Toowoomba, Toowoomba, Australia. Desert out there, man. It's amazing. And, um, and so, but I'm like, where are these birds? They go, don't look up. I say, why? And they say, because if you look up, the bird will come down. It'll poke your eyeballs out. They literally poke your eyeballs out. And they said, it very, very rarely happens, hardly ever, but you might want to be careful not to look up. When I heard that story, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not looking up. I, I just, I preached the whole night, even in the auditorium like this. I mean, what if, what if it snuck in and got through the back, you know, and uh, went to, and just did a swooping move? And went, Woo, and just... Yes, they were scary, but they were not as scary as I made them out to be. Why? Because we just live in this mind, this lack of supernatural belief that God is in control. We get wrapped up in a world that we are never born to be wrapped up in. We are concepts and beliefs and mindsets, and you're not enough, and you're this and you're that. And because you're raised in this poverty, you'll always, you know, be raised up and as an inferior person when you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God and probably more loved than anybody in the world. But we live in these kind of limiting mindset belief of understanding that just gets so messed up. And we start believing things like um, family line, this is what we'll be, and all of that, when God is just like, I want you to change the remote of your focus. There are hundreds of channels on a television that you can change the focus at any time that you want into something positive or something negative, and there's a remote in your brain that you got to tune into and say, God, I will not live on the understanding of man. I'm going to live in the supernatural. And some of you are doing the right thing. You're in discipleship, but you got all these worries about what's going on. How's God handling my business outside of this program? i got all these things that are there. You know what? The Bible says he will perfect those things which concerns thee. He's already working them out. I'm telling you. Fear is an illusion. It's a belief that you will always be stuck in a place of anxiety. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication. There's times uh, growing up, I used to see my dad go home, and he was the most positive man I've ever met. And that's one thing I love about ministry is that, you know, you get a, you get a chance to be raised with someone, see them at their best and their worst. And I'd see him in on top side preaching, and there's times I'd see him so discouraged, he would just walk in the house and shut his door for hours and uh, not come out, just be so discouraged, especially in the early days of, of building a church. And, um, and, then, and there's times I'd be like, man, I wish my dad would encourage me. And God said, no, no, no. That's earthly understanding. You're, you need to encourage him. And uh, I got selfish because he encouraged me all the time and built me up all the time. I got used to it. God said, no. You take this time, and I just walk in. I say, anything you need, let me know. You go, all right. And what he really needed was for someone that season of his life to leave him alone. I just left him alone for a period of time. And, and he went through some really tough battles and uh, struggles. And, 
and issues of building so fast in the ministry, being a pioneer and all those things. And, um, but I always saw him go back to the well of prayer. I'd always see him get to the place where his comeback was always in, in, in a place of prayer. And every night I'd go to bed, I had this little vent that would, that would attach my room to his. And I could hear him at 6 o'clock every morning just begin to pray, God, help me, Jesus. I mean, it was never like fancy. It was like, oh, God, what tie should I wear? And it was like, see, he was talking to God like he was right there. I'm like, oh, my, this is really weird. He like groaning and then like feel like he, he was in desperation. And then he would go into like, uh, what socks and shoes would look best today? I'm like, man, that's real life. Bring all your requests and supplication to God. You know, bring your advice on your clothes. Bring your advice, whatever you, whatever you want to bring to God. He's, he's in it. He's in it with you to the end. And there's people, you know, you're anxious, and I get it. You're anxious going back to school, and who's going to be my friend group this year? God's already got you covered. He's already got you covered. What, what, all the peer pressures, doesn't matter. God has got you covered, and he's going to be with you every step of the way. But you got to call upon God. you got to get used to seeing beyond the understanding and seeing the supernatural, the peace that's there. The peace is always beyond human reasoning and human philosophy and human understanding get to the place where you start having a faith again that doesn't make sense you just know you just know god is about to do something great have you ever um have you ever played a video game and you had a superpower at the end that nobody knew about you're just holding that thing like you play mario kart and you're getting ready to get to the end, and you have the rocket, and you know, and you kind of save that thing, and you hit that rocket button, and you just go all the way through, and it's kind of nice knowing that you got, you got something in your back pocket. You have a God that's there. You have a force, a strength, a power, a supplication, and you, he is with you all the time, and you're going to make it through. Am I mad we're not in our building? A little bit. I mean, I wish we were there, but I'm just glad I am wherever I am right now. As a country song said, it's a great day to be alive. The sun keeps shining. And I don't know the rest of it, but it, I'm sure it's a great song. Amen. But let's pray. Father, we just thank you today that we don't have to be anxious for anything. Bring us back to prayer. Bring us back to just raw communication, allowing us to understand that you are in everything that that's important to us, that's unimportant, whatever, Lord, you are just there all the time. And today, God, I just pray that people would just be healed of anxiety, and you would take them beyond that place. You would take them to that place of supplication, those humble pleas, that place of prayer that is beyond reasoning. God, take us beyond everything in the world that seems to limit us and hold us back and stop us, and take us into a place of spiritual growth. Maybe it's been years since we've had a pattern of talking to you, God. May that pattern begin today. May today be the day that we just start seeking you, loving your word, trusting in prayer again. Not saying, oh, I missed my prayer time today. Just say, no, my prayer time is right now. 5.30 at night, that's my prayer time because that's what I need right now. And start practicing just being in the presence of God. And just realizing that you are dwelling and you are moving in all places. If you're here tonight and say, I want to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm not sure if I die today, I'd be with God. But I want a relationship with Jesus. I'm tired of doing it on my own. I'm tired of living under the fear of what is next when I was born to live in hope in tomorrow because God is there and hope in eternity because that is my promise when I call upon the name of the Lord. I shall be saved. And today is your day. Now is your time. You want to move beyond understanding, and you want to move to the peace that is beyond understanding, that rejoices in trials, that sees hope and a way out in the middle of unbelievable pain. And today is your day to say, that's me, Pastor. I'm ready. I'm ready to know Christ is my Lord and Savior. When I say three, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to move beyond 
the understanding of why God would save you. I want you to move beyond the rationale of how you could be forgiven or how religious you ought to be or why would God even want to live in my life with all that I've done. That's what salvation is. It's moving beyond understanding and it's moving to the rationale of, an, of, of a supernatural peace. You've got to find peace beyond all the limitations of your own thought process and beliefs and lies have been listened to the peace is beyond the lies the peace is beyond the battle and today is your day now is the time you are ready to accept christ your lord and savior i want you to raise your hands one two three lift them up all over this room just lift them up they're going up all over this building just keep raising them all over this room praise god hands are going up repeat these words after me thank you jesus for dying on the cross and i am saved i repent of my sin and i give you my life because you died for me you gave me peace the cross was a place of confusion for many but it was at that moment where the greatest peace was revealed that the world has ever known and I received that peace that nobody understood through Jesus it was beyond their understanding but it was through the cross and the blood that was shed, that I have life. In Jesus' name. Now when every person will say, Pastor, I'm dealing with anxiety. I want God to begin a new walk in me. I want to start learning to serve and seek God again. I want to commit my life to a life of prayer. But everyone that struggles, I just want you to stand your feet. As we sing this song, I just want you to not doubt that you'll be healed. I want you just to receive that you are healed right now. Move beyond if it's going to happen. Move beyond. Can I get beyond this? And just receive what God's about to give you right now. Just receive it. Don't negotiate. Don't negotiate with it. Just receive it. Believe it. Stand up. I don't want to be afraid every time I face the way. storm just because I hear it roar. I don't want to fear the storm. I don't want to fear the storm.
of the unknown of peace, God. We love you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord, that we always get through. Even when we try to walk on water and we get our eyes off on everything else in the world, we start to sink. You're always there for us, God. We live in that assurance. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, Thursday night, Jim Rayleigh's going to be here. Have you ever heard Jim Rayleigh? He is a preaching machine. I mean, we're going to need a bigger runway. You can be running up and down here. All right, Thursday night. Have a great day. We will see you. We got some all kinds of great stuff outside. Uh, get the snow cones. All right. God bless you. Kona ice, whatever that is. Sounds good. All right.